Hi everyone, so today I'm going to attempt to show you um, how to sew an exposed core pad. Um, but before I get into like the steps of how I'm going to sew mine, I'm going to show you the two types of exposed cores um, that I know about. So this is the first one, this this pad here is from a splendid story. And this is the kind of exposed core where you have the core attached to a base that has two layers of fabric. So in this case the two layers are both cotton. I'm just going to pull it up high as you can see. So there's this back of fabric and then there's the um, top side of the backer of the base, sorry, and then this is the core, um, you know, sewed onto the base. And as you can see, when you stitch the core on, you stitch through the back side of it, but you know, you're stitching outside of the absorbent layer, so it shouldn't cause any leaking. And then the other exposed core that I know of is um, where you have the core fabric attached to a backer that is a single piece of fleece. Um, so that's what I'm going to do today because this is my preferred style for pads with that I actually use on my period because I personally find that um, with a core like this, because the wing doesn't have any absorbent material, um, at the center bleeder, um, when this area of the pad gets saturated, rather than continuing to bleed off the wings, um, the blood just moves kind of forward and back throughout the whole core and I get to use more of the pad before I need to change. I actually have a video about that where I explain you know, what I just said, so I'm going to include a link for that below. Um, so in this case, the core materials have been surged together and then attached to the base. And again, you can see stitching through the back, um, but again, it should be like right outside the core area, so you shouldn't have any wicking through these stitch holes, and I've never had any issues with this. Um, <clears throat> this pad is from Sky Baby Dives. I have several pads from home, and I've never leaked through the stitching on the core. Uh, so today I'm going to attempt to show you you know, how to turn exposed core pads step by step. Um, I don't have a serger, so I'm going to do um, a turn on top stitch core and then attach that to a single piece of face for the base. So I'm going to pause, uh, reposition, and then come back and show you the next steps. Okay, I'm back. So the first step I'm going to show you is how I'm going to um, draw my base. So as of today, when I filmed this, uh, Moon Girl Studio has been, has re-released her patterns um, with some slight modifications. So she has a bunch of new wing options, including one that allows you to add an extra inch through the midsection. So that's what I'm going to do um, for my pad today. So this is the 12-inch pattern, uh, with two and a half inch width, and the extra long wings. Um, I'll include a link to the shop below, and hopefully by the time I get this up, the patterns are still on sale because it's kind of a limited release. So again, I mentioned that I'm going to do a backer where um, it's just a single piece of fleece. So really all I have to do for this is to trace the exact, exact shape of the pad, you know, the whole pad pattern with the wings onto the fleece and then cut it exactly in that area. So I'm just going to quickly trace that and then cut it out. Uh, hopefully I can do this on camera. Let's see here. Okay, I apologize for the shadow. I don't have great natural light in this area, so I have to use a lamp. And I will, of course, speed this bit up. I will say though, um, so this is just anti fill fleece because that's what I have on hand. For this kind of of style where you use a single piece of fleece, you might want to use a slightly sturdier fleece because you will be pulling on the, um, you know, when you snap on snap, you'll pull on the fleece a bit, and there is a probably a little risk of uh, the snaps kind of coming through the fleece or the fleece stretching a bit. So if I were to do several more of these, I probably would invest in. Um, a higher density fleece like Win Pro, just probably anything from Polartec. Um, but I think this should be fine for a stash my size where I don't use any one pad too often. Because I do, I have done an exposed core pad before with this fleece at the back end. It's been fine. But you know, with a lot of use, it might stretch out a bit. Okay, so my pad shifted a bit there. Okay. So that's it. I cut the, sorry, I traced the, um, Pad shape onto the fleece, and then I'm just going to cut it out. This is a, uh, I think like a 20 millimeter ruler cutter, I forget, it doesn't matter. Scissors, whatever is easiest for you. So I'm going to pause, cut this out, and come back and show you how I'm going to do the core layers. So I wanted to come back and add one thing. Um, first of all, I forgot I don't have my cutter mat down, so I used a pair of scissors to cut the pad shape out. Um, but one thing that's important to think about if you want to do an exposed score with a single piece of fleece as the backer 
is that you need to pick a piece of fleece that is um, soft on both sides because I'm going to have this as my top side because I prefer this kind of the pillier part of the fleece to be on my underwear so to stop any shifting. Um, and this side is soft enough to go against my skin because once the wings are snapped, you know, this is the area that's going to touch your skin. So you want to be sure that whatever fleece you use is comfortable, um, comfortable for you, you know, right against your skin. Okay, so I'm going to come back now and show you the core layers. Again, so how are we going to sew the core of the exposed core together? So part of the core is going to be your top of fabric. So usually when you cut top of fabric in a turn on top stitch pad, you draw, um, you trace the entire pad shape, including the wings. But this time we're just going to trace the core. So for the mungle pattern, I'm going to use the contour core that she has instead of the rectangular core. And I'm going to trace that on the wrong side of my top of fabric. Um, so I'm going to do that. And then um, I'm going to have this heavy flannel here as the back side of my core. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to have, have heavy organic bamboo fleece here. What I'm going to do for that, to avoid having um, very thick seams on the edge of the core that have to then be top stitched to the um, fleece backer, I'm going to cut this in a rectangle shape. So I'm going to cut all the pieces out and come back and show you how I'm going to layer them together. I think it will make a little bit more sense then. Be right back. <laughs> So now I have all my layers for my core cut out. So I actually had an idea while I was cutting, um, cutting out some of the core layers. And I think I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I ended up tracing on um, what is just the back of the core. Generally, um, when I do a turn and top stitch kind of thing, I only need you know one trace line to follow. But I think I'm going to take advantage of this and use both. So what I'm going to do um, is actually take... so this. These two layers here are heavy organic bamboo fleece. And if you've seen heavy organic bamboo fleece, you know, there's one side is fleecy, but the other side is really a knit. And for me, I have some trouble sewing those because they tend to stretch out and then I, it gets a little bit warped in my machine, even though I have a walking foot on. Um, so what I'm going to do is attach these layers to the flannel part here, like so. Um, but there's exact stitch to get it to kind of lie flat. And then um, I will, uh, does that make sense? Yes. Turn this over, attach these like so, you know, with the top of fabric and then the flannel and then the bamboo fleece. And then when I turn it inside out um, or right side out, I'll end up with basically a kind of hidden core look at the top. I'm not going to see the core section on the top side, but everything will be attached. Uh, I just realized I didn't leave a turn space here. So I'm going to leave a turn space um, in the wider flare because I know I won't have any extra bulk from the um, from the fleece there, the bamboo fleece. I think like maybe an inch and a half should be okay. I mean, it's just sound up a little bit higher here. Yeah, so let me just, I think that should work. So this is going to be my turn space when I attach all the layers. So again, we're going to, actually I'm going to trim this core a little bit more so that I don't, because I need to be able to sew on this edge here. Um, but anyway, I should also mention that I cut the core um, at 11 by 2, or it was supposed to be 11 by 2. But there's instructions in the pattern as to exactly what size you should cut your core, but this is how I'm doing mine. Just to give me enough room to sew along the edges. Um, so yes, yeah, so I attach these two 
And then what I want the final product to be is this. So yeah, flipping this like so and this like so. We'll give me that. Okay. So I'm going to um just trim the bamboo face a bit and then set up um with the camera pointed at the machine and I'll show you how I attach the layers. Okay, be right back. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I'm going to attach the bamboo fleece to the flannel that we're going to use for, for the backer of the core. Um, so I had to trim down my uh, rectangular bits because I want to make sure that they were well inside of the trace line that I have for the flannel. I apologize if this isn't like the best setup, but hopefully you'll be able to understand what I'm going for. So I'm just going to these layers aren't perfectly rectangular, but that's fine. Um, I'm mostly a center bleeder, so I don't really care about what's going on in the extremities. I'm just gonna pin it down on the ends here. I'm gonna have to reposition the camera a bit to show you what I'm gonna do next. Okay, so that is roughly in the middle. Sorry, bear with me here. Right. So next what I'm going to do is um, use a loose zigzag stitch. My machine doesn't have many stitches, it just says 10. And I'm going to use um, number 4 here. This is the loosest zigzag that I have. Okay. Um, to attach the bamboo fleece to the flannel. Sorry, so the camera is like right in front of me here, so it's a little bit finicky of a setup. I'm probably just going to speed this up, but just so you can see. Uh, so if you've watched my other sewing tutorial, you'll know why I'm doing this. It basically helps to flatten the layers of the core and gives you a nice trim edge. So I like to um, I like to position the needle so that when it goes off the right side, it is kind of a little bit off the edge of these core layers here. So it gives you a nice flat edge. I'm going to sew that up and then show you what it looks like when I'm done. I usually just I hand crank um, at the beginning just to make sure the needle is going where I want it to go. So if you can see here, I just pivoted. Um, but you can see how nice and flat the edge gets when you zigzag. Sorry for my nails. I just took some nail polish off and they look gross. Um, but yeah, so that's why I do the zigzag. And I like to do it onto a piece of um, kind of sturdy fabric like flannel or birds eye cotton, which I used in my last video, because those don't have any stretch. So it helps to kind of keep the knit from getting warped on my machine. Um, I'm sure most people's machines can handle this, but mine tends to <laughs> um, make things go a little bit wonky. <laughs> Also, do you see, I wanted to point out, you can see that the knit is stretching out here. That's another reason why I cut um, the rectangle a little bit short, because again, my machine tends to stretch knits out. Um, so this means that this helps me to avoid um, ending up with a piece that's too long by the end of the sewing process. So this kind of stretches it out to just the right size. So I'm going to pivot again here. See my needle is in the down position. I'm going to lift the presser foot up. To in, put the presser foot back down and keep stitching.
I'm back where I started. I just had to fix a tangle, this fresco tangle up on the back side. So I'm gonna um again just backstitch here to make sure that these stitches don't um sorry that these stitches don't unravel. So I'm gonna take this off the machine. Um, then I'm gonna come back and show you how I'm gonna attach the topper to this the rest of the core stuff here. So reposition again. I'm hoping. I'm sorry that the light is so dark. Hopefully I can brighten it up when I edit the video. Um, so now we have the core, like the absorbent part of the core, of the core um, sewn together. <laughs> it's not the best rectangle, but the so there's two layers of heavy bamboo, heavy organic bamboo fleece, attached to a layer of heavy flannel. I will include links for all the fabrics that I use. Um, in the description or at least like the details so you know kind of what the total weight is um what i'm going to do is ultimately what i want to happen is that this um the bamboo fleece part is immediately under the topper right so i want the final layer to look like this top of fabric bamboo fleece and then flannel as the back of the core that we're going to attach to the fleece so i layer it like i want the final product to look and then i'm kind of i'm going to flip it inside out so basically I'm going to take, I'm going to do, uh, I want to do it in a way that makes, that it makes it clear what I'm trying to get. So inside out to me, I'm going to just pin it so you can see what it looks like inside out. So this is the final layering, right? Top of fabric, heavy bamboo fleece immediately under the core, flannel as the back of the, you know, the core piece with I'm attaching to the back of, and inside out it looks like this. Okay, so this is the wrong side of the top of fabric. And then flannel, the flannel backer of the topper piece, I'm sorry, of the core piece. And then the heavy bamboo fleece is behind that. So, the, so what it should look like when you put it through the machine is, I'm going to take this pin out. Top of fabric, wrong side up. So you're going to see the pattern traced on it. And then the absorbent layers with the flannel up. The final being the back of your absorbent layer, and then the um, my case bamboo fleece or any other um, absorbency that you attached facing completely down. Okay, so I'm just gonna pin these together. The only thing that the only thing, issue though is that having attached the absorbent layers, you know, to that piece below, um, I have to make sure that everything lines up exactly right so that I know that the absorbency is within the core material. I don't want um, pieces of the bamboo fleece peeking out. So I'm going to just adjust a couple times, pin this up, and then take it to the machine. So where I find that might be kind of um, easiest to do that is to pick a kind of set point. So I'm going to pick the, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> um, Yes, let me show you if I can face this way. I'm gonna pick the top center of the um the core layer trace sorry, the top of layer trace here and try to find the same point and the final. So I can kind of see the trace line. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I can see the trace line through the fabric. So then try to line those up like that. This is obviously not great, but you know, I make these pads for myself, so I, I'm not too concerned if they're perfect. Um, I can tell I'm not high up enough because I can feel the um, the bamboo fleece, so I'm going to push that up a bit. Maybe let's try it start up on the bigger end then. I'm going to try to speed this up, but basically you get what I'm trying to do, which is position the top of fabric in such a way that the, um, the absorbency that I sewed in, the bamboo fleece is completely centered and there's none of it like on the edges outside of the bounds of this trace line but if it's not exactly right that's okay I don't I don't too much care if my core is a little bit off center I just want to make sure that I can um, stitch around it easily and then top stitch around it easily that's gonna be the main issue but again, my core got a little bit twisted when I was attaching it, so I think that feels, I'm just kind of feeling with my fingers, that feels good enough for me. Okay, so I'm going to, and then I, I like to use, you know, given that I have all this extra fabric in the seam allowance, I just 
also put a pin there. Okay, I'm sorry, my hands are getting in the way. So that's the final pin in. And you can kind of see where the pins line up on the opposite side. I think that looks to be in good shape to me. So I'm going to again reposition and go back to the machine. So now again we have the layers of the core um, with the topper attached ready to go through the machine. When I do this bit, which is like the traditional turn on top stitch pad, I like to use a fairly short stitch length. So I'm going to use the middle straight stitch on my machine. I like to call it a seven and then go one, two, three. Um, I mentioned this in my last tutorial, if you use a fairly short stitch length, it means you can make fine adjustments while you sew so that, um, you know, every stitch is, if you're going to make a mistake, it's not going to be a huge mistake because the stitch was too long. Okay, so I'm going to see where I can put, I'm going to put my camera down right in front of me here. Um, I don't know how much of this you're going to see, but I'm, I'm just going to speed it up anyway. And this turn space that we're going to use when we, um, turn, you know, turn the pad right side out. So I'm just going to start at the end of it here. Again, I like to hand crank, at least on my machine, I find it easier just to hand crank. To start, I like to make sure that the needle is where I want, the stitch length is what I want, and that kind of thing. So I just hand crank about three or four stitches, and then back stitch. And this is this pattern is so on the line, so I'm going to stitch exactly on the line. I'm not there's no seam allowance in this as I traced it. The seam allowance is you know the excess fabric. <laughs> Okay, so we're back at the other side of the turn space, so I'm just going to stitch up till this line here, and then back stitch. So now I'm going to back stitch. Okay, I'm going to take this off the machine, um, trim it up, and then come back and show you how I'm going to turn it inside up, right side up. Be right back. So I figured I would just trim this on camera, um, just in case there's any new swords, uh, new swords looking at this video so this shouldn't be too difficult I'm gonna use pink and shares to have this zigzag pattern um, and that should simplify it a bit for me but really you just want to get you know close to the seam but don't trim through your stitches and make sure to leave um, this flap of fabric uh, uncut so that you can tuck it in um, when you you know to close your turn space so let's just go yeah Just gonna this is what it looks like on the back side not very pretty but you know that doesn't matter too much it's gonna be hidden um so i'm going to get a tool that i have here so i'm pretty sure this is called a bodkin i looked it up after the last time i filmed the video i couldn't remember the name so it's gonna let me go in and grab um, a piece of fabric on inside on the inside and then i push this little loop down to close it and then I can pull um, the fabric off to turn it. 
Although this is, I mean, this doesn't have wings, so it doesn't have any sh two sharp corners, so I should be able to go in with my finger and get it out as well. But let's see. Actually, I'm just going to use my finger. So, I'm just going to go in. Oh. So I'm going to go to the furthest corner from where, where my turn hole was. Okay, I'm just going to use the tool. So I push it in. Go up to the... Be careful, this, the one that I have is kind of sharp and it could punch a hole in the fabric, so just be aware of that. I think this is main, meant to be used to like turn, um, not turn, to pull elastic through loops and stuff like that. So I push the loop up. No, I'm going to pull the fabric out. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm gonna get a chopstick if I can find one just to push out the corners. Okay, and the chopstick that I keep in my sewing kit. Just push out the corners here. And I apologize again for the light, it's really hard for me to. My sewing table is very far from the window, and we don't have much natural light. In this corner anyway. Okay. So this looks super narrow, but I mean that's just about the size the core would have been anyway. Okay. And I know it will be fine once the pad is sewn together now. So this could definitely benefit from getting iron just to make it flat enough to attach. So I'm going to go find my iron wherever it is and um Press this and then be right back to show you how it gets attached to the base. Be right back. Okay, so we're actually at the last step now. Um, so I, this is the base that we cut out earlier. I want this pillar side to be um, facing my underwear, so I'm going to turn this over. That's the side we traced on. Um, and I just press my core. So this is what it looks like. Um, you know, all turned but not top stitched yet. This is the back side. It's not the prettiest, um, but you know, you're not gonna see this part at all. So it turned out correctly as I hoped. Um, the bamboo fleece layers are inside and the flannel bit is at the back. Um, so basically you're just going to then, where you would have top stitched, um, you know, traditional to top stitch pad. Instead, now you're going to use the top stitching as a means of attaching the core piece to the base. So you just need to position that, you know, Center it where you need it on your fleece backer, on your fleece base. This, you know, my sewing is not completely symmetrical, so it's not exactly right. I have a pin in my turn hole here. I just need to, you know, adjust this. It's going to be a little crooked, but that's okay. See? All right, so I'm just going to grab some pins. What I'm going to do when I sew, um, I'm going to try to get as close to the edge as possible. My machine only has straight stitches. I don't have, um, sorry, I, I don't have like a nice wavy stitch I could use. Um, so I'm, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge for me, but you know, if you have a kind of loose wavy stitch, that's probably going to be a little bit easier. But I'm going to have to make sure when I get into kind of the midsection of the pad here, that I'm very close to the edge so that I don't sew through, um, or I have tried to avoid as much as possible sewing through the bamboo stitch layers. But again, like I don't, I've never had any trouble um, with wicking with a exposed core pad. You know, I never leaks through the stitch hole, so I don't really anticipate a problem um, for me personally. So, um, if you think that that might be an issue for you, I will include a link for um, Flow of the Goddess here on YouTube. It has a really great great tutorial on how to do an exposed core pad to avoid stitching through the back. If that's something you're concerned about, but for me personally, I don't think it'll be a problem. So I'm going to do it this way, because this is what I prefer. Um, I'm going to add another pin at the back here. I think that should be in... Uh, actually, no, I'm going to put just a couple right along the edges here. It's a little bit thick. Alright, maybe... I don't even know if I can for that. Okay, there we go. I 
I don't want to uh, bend it too much. I'm going to have to be really careful um, to make sure that this isn't shifting on the base too much. So I'm going to, oh, this is a little bit crooked. Okay, we're taking, <laughs> sorry. I'm just really trying to adjust the pins so that they're more helpful than harmful. I think I'm going to use my clips instead. I think that'll give me more of what I'm looking for, just to keep them in the right place on the edges here. Okay. Um, these are quilting clips, I think. I'm not sure. Um, Wonder Clips, I think Clover is the best known brand for them. I bought some off brand ones. Um, but they're great for holding lots of layers together without bending things like pins will tend to do. I will try to include a link, or at least the name of them, if you want to get them. Okay, so I'm going to reposition again, go over to the machine and top stitch to attach the core to the base, and I will also close close our turn base over here. Be right back. So I'm back in my machine. Um, when I top stitch pads, I use the longest stitch available on my machine, which is um, this loop, like long six, number six here, long straight stitch, I should say. Um, I'm not going to use a walking foot or anything. I'm just going to kind of ease the pad through the machine, trying to stay really close to the edge. Um, I'm going to take advantage of the, of the fact that this is a knit and kind of pull on it a little bit as I sew just to widen it a bit. Um, although that may not be necessary because I think, sorry, I'm not the camera right now, but I think once it is snapped, that will actually be. So I'll sh we'll take a look at it when it's finished to see how it snapped up. Okay. So I'm just going to put the pad in the machine here. I like to start kind of on the top right hand side. Um, so I'm going to position my foot. So you probably can't see it. I'm going to see if I can show you here. So where the foot is there, the edge of the pad is kind of right in the middle of the foot so that the needle can be fairly close to the edge. Um, more, you know, um, newer models of machines, I should say, give you the ability to move the needle exactly where you need it. My machine doesn't do that. I have It's just kind of middle or far left. So I kind of have to move the pad where I want it. Anyway, so I'm gonna top stitch this, fingers crossed that it turns out well, and then we'll take a look at the finish. Then we have to my back stitch and all that stuff, so let me just put this where I need it to be. back at the starting point I'm just gonna backstitch and then we will look at the finish pad together okay I'm gonna reposition and come back okay so this is the finished pad it's honestly not great looking but that has more to do with my sewing skills and my machines limitations than the concept of the pattern um, of the technique I guess so this is what it looks like sewn on, um, you know, this kind of inconsistent space and is again more to do with my sewing skills. Um, but basically why I like these is that again, if I start bleeding, you know, um, in this area here and it's getting saturated, because there's no absorbent material on the wings, the blood is not going to go further off the edges, it's just going to go forward and back, you know, it's going to go into the absorbent material throughout the wings, I'm sorry, throughout the core of the pad. Um, so yes, yeah, so I you know I I really like exposed core pads. Um, I find that they really work out well for me, especially um, overnight on heavy nights. Um, if you you know have a slightly better looking back um, than I do, um, sorry. My point I'm trying to make is that it gives the back edge of the pad a nice kind of thinness. So you know it's just as thin as the. It's only as thick as the fleece is, 
So if you use a thinner fleece, like some kind of wind pro, it'll be even better. Um, and then again, this is just the new Moongo pattern, hopefully still available on sale by the time I get this up. It has, you know, it gives you a little bit of extra um, area in the middle of the pad. I think I'm only going to use, I'm just going to show you what it looks like when it will be snapped up. I think I'm only going to use one snap. It'll, I don't mind if the wings kind of curl a bit like that. I'm just going to pin it so we can see what it looks like snapped from the front side. Again, you can see the stitching through the back here. But I think I stitched far enough from the main absorbency that I'm not going to have any issues with leaking. Sorry about the shadow there. Okay, so snapped up, it looks like that. And there's not, you know, too much excess space. So really, even though the core looked fairly narrow, it couldn't really be any wider. Um, so yeah, that is an exposed core pad um, with a single piece of fleece as the base. Um, hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I will try to include as much information as possible in the description box, fabrics, you know, layering, that kind of, kind of thing. Thanks for watching. Bye.